Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. In this episode, I like to talk about range-based for loops and show you how C++ Insights can help you to see what the different standard versions do to the range-based for loop. Let's start with C++11 and a rather simple example. We have a job buffer here containing the characters hello and then we have a range-based for loop which declares a const autoref called C and it iterates over buffer. And all this does is see outing the current element C. If I do the transformation, then we can see a couple of things. So the first thing we can notice about range-based full loops is that a compiler opens and closes a new scope in which it places the implementation for the range-based full loop. This is crucial because it ensures that all the variables the compiler creates for us to make this range-based for loop happen are automatically destroyed at the end of the range-based for loop by the usual C++ rules. What you can see next is that in the range-based for loop the compiler creates a variable for us called range which is a reference to our buffer and then it uses a just regular for loop to implement the rest of it and in that for loop, it initially declares two new variables, begin and end. Both are pointers. Begin points to the beginning of the range, while end points to the end of the range. And as the compiler precisely knows the size of the array, it can set the pointer to the end of the range. Then, as a condition, it compares begin to not equal end. And in the end, it increments begin by one. In the body of the for loop, we can then see that we're here getting the requested variable. As C++ Insights also does the auto deduction, we can see it's of course a const jar here and it's a reference. And the compiler automatically dereferences begin one for us, such that our reference can bind to it. So that's the behind the scenes of a range-based for loop. Now if we switch the standard, say to C++14, then we can see that the implementation of the range-based for loop slightly changes. Because now not only our range variable is outside of the for loops declaration, it's also the two additional variables begin and end. That makes our um, header of the four much simpler. So it's now only comparing begin not equal to end and increments begin. And the rest stays the same. And the reason for that is in not all the cases begin and end are the same type. And in C11 that was a restriction. C14 lifts it. So in theory now end must not need to be some kind of iterator or not the same type. As long as there is an operator not equal in the namespace of one of the types or in the global namespace, able to compare these two types, we are fine. Now if we alter this example slightly and instead of using a plain old C array, use a std vector, for example, it could li look like this here. It's essentially the same. We have a buffer with the characters hello in it and we iterate over that buffer, printing it out as before. If we do the transformation here, we can see a couple of side things. Um, so std vector is obviously a template. It comes with an additional template parameter, which we often not use to pass in an allocator. We can also see that due to the initialization we chose, we are getting an std initializer list here. 
But let's not focus on that. Let's focus on what happens in the range base for loop. And here we can see because it's a vector, we are getting back an iterator for begin and for end with again range begin and range end. This is the alternative the compiler calls when it's not an array. And of course here the operator plus plus is called and we can now see that for the comparison to not equal there is a global operator not equal in the namespace of the standard library. This is a good place to point out that the different standard libraries generate different symbols here. So as default C++ insights uses libstudc++ but there is also an option to switch over to lib C++ and the basics here are the same but the symbols look slightly different if we are switching over to lib C++. It's a bit shorter and it's a bit more readable but um, yeah well uh, it doesn't matter to your code because usually you do not see that part of your code. Let's face another modification of this example. Say we just not want only print out the element in the vector, but we also like to say at which index this element was placed in the vector. So a typical thing would be having a counter and incrementing that counter each time we print out a symbol, like it's written here. The thing is, Range-based for loops do not allow this additional initialization of a variable here. In C++11, 14 and 17, but the rules changed with C++20. So if we switch to C++20 mode, we can see that the code now compiles and all the compiler does, it's so simple, it just puts this requested variable into the scope of the range-based for loop but in front of all the other variables it declares and our code now just works and we can have this additional counter or whatever we need in this place. So that's a nice improvement coming with C20 here. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye bye.